Welcome to the Partnership Path in Real Life podcast, where you'll discover how partner management theories drive real-world success. Learn from the experiences of your peers, gain practical advice to overcome challenges, and acquire the skills to become a top-performing channel professional. Join our community by subscribing now and elevate your partner management career. Well, welcome to uh, the Partnership Path in Real Life, Selena Butler. I'm so excited to have you on the podcast with me. Um, it's been a while since we've had a chance to talk, um, but we have done a lot of things together. So I am super excited to get your perspective on this. But before we get into it, let me give you a chance to introduce yourself to our listeners. Tell us a little bit about um, you know, where you're working, what you do, and how long you've been engaged with partners in particular. Yeah, well, thank you, John. So good to see you again. And yes, we've had many years working together. So what a what a great opportunity to come here and, and speak with you today. Um, yeah, so Selena Butler, I've been in application business business sales for 20 years. I spent my career really uh, building ecosystems, also working with direct sales organizations. I've worked at companies yeah. like Epicor Software. I'm currently at Infor Software. And yeah, I really built my career around working with partners. Yeah, look, one of the one of the things I love about your background, Selena, is is this mix of direct and partner. Um, you know, we have lots of people who come on the show who either have one or the other, um, and having that sort of integration, you get to you you see it from both sides. Um, and I think even now you're managing both sides of that business, and so it's just it's such a good perspective to have. So I'm anxious to hear how that kind of influences what we talk a little bit about today, um, which is we just did this episode, Tony and I just did this episode mm -hmm. on, you know, kind of being a virtual sales manager. How do you trying to help uh, in particular, like channel partners, maybe who don't have as much sales experience as we might have kind of helping them by being a, you know, a coach and a virtual sales manager to them. So I'm anxious to hear as someone who's been both direct and partner, What'd you think of that episode? What kind of stood out to you, um, both good or bad? What you know? What's your reaction to that? Yeah, it's a fascinating subject because at the end of the day, we're trying to accomplish similar goals, working with a yeah. direct sales organization and, and really a partner organization. But there's one very stark difference. These partners do not work for you, right? So yeah. it's how do you get to the point where you have that trust and credibility with yeah. the goal of getting you know, better together. So trying to break down the walls where you're really establishing a common language and also, uh -huh. you know, have humility. So yeah. partners know that you're there to help guide them for the be the better of your partnership. It's not a, let me interrogate you on your deal type yeah. of relationship, right? And, and if I think back in my career, going back, however many years, it doesn't matter, right? It has <laughs> kind of changed, right? Where yeah. it was more of a interrogation, let me try to stump you on your deal. And then on the reverse right. side, the sales rep may be looking at it and saying, well, I'm gonna try to paint a really good picture. Cause I remember yeah. doing that, sitting in that yeah. seat. Whereas right. a channel manager, right? It's a completely different approach that we've tried yeah. to bring to market that I think some of our channel managers are just really excelling in. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that that differentiation, I think, is so key. And I think it's one of the most interesting things, um, in particular, this combo background that you have. Right. Because I would be willing to bet that the the efforts you and your team have to put into being good sales coaches with partners, people who don't work for you, yep. has actually made you a better direct sales manager, sales coach with the people who do work for you for that very reason of when they work for you, it's a little bit easier to be an interrogator, but you can't, you can't do that when they don't work for you. And yeah. so I, I, I'm sure that that must have some sort of flow over between the two. Um, talk to me a little bit about how you encourage your leaders, your managers, your partner people to 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 do that to to make it more conversational to make it less inter uh, in, interrogatory yeah. whatever the word is <laughs> interrogating in, interrogative yes yeah. 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 no absolutely how do you do so, that yeah so it, it 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 certainly does not 
happen overnight, right? I mean, yeah. it it is getting back to kind of my first points around building trust and credibility. I think some channel managers do that um, at, a, at a different rate. And it really depends sure. on the personality of the partner, the personality yeah. of the channel manager. And what we try to do is if we can, we try to match up those portfolios so we can kind of get some commonality, if you will, to break yeah. down those bridges and then have, you know, establish that common language and, and, and leverage that trust. So yeah. it's fun then to see channel managers that have accomplished that where right. they, they've done that through steps like, you know, giving back to the partner as far as sharing their experiences or suggestions like, ha have you possibly tried this or oh, I've tried this in the past? Um, and again, just just approaching it in a completely different way where you can just take down that that intensity um, yeah. because you're just trying to to figure out what are the gaps in right. a deal. Again, speaking the common language to go and get after it together. Yeah. Yeah. That that whole conversation that Tony and I had around really trying to identify the risk. Right. Where where are we collectively? at risk in this deal. Not where have you not done your job, exactly. but you know, where have we collectively maybe missed a piece of information or forgot to ask the right question or not said the right thing. And then what do we do about it? How do, how can right. I help you do the right thing? Yeah. yeah. And you brought us an interesting point too. I mean, there are a million different sales processes out there and it doesn't really matter what you believe in or what you kind of bring yeah. from, from each of those areas. It's, Again, yeah. taking maybe what you know, maybe what the partner knows, meeting them where they're at to figure out yeah. what is that common language. And then again, like you mentioned, it's all about identifying those gaps for just the the the, the sake of moving, de-risking a deal, right? And deciding right. to move forward or not. Yeah. 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 What, um, in fact, so uh, Tony and I talked a little bit about my, you know, I've got these eight categories that I like to use um, when I'm doing either partner deal reviews or direct reviews. Um, how does that resonate with you and some of your experience with some of these partners? Like, is that having like, you know, kind of coming to the table with like a sort of these are the things I normally go after? You know, would you recommend that or would you recommend you know, kind of starting with a blank sheet of paper with the partner, what's your recommendation on the best way to find that common language? Yeah, what, what, how I, we've typically approached it is just to seek to understand maybe what the partner is using today. Maybe they yeah. have rolled out MedPick internally yeah. and they're leveraging right. that and having great success. Well, then maybe that's the right framework, right? Or maybe yeah. par a partner, again, meeting them where they're at, maybe they, they have nothing. So that's really yeah. an opportunity to bring some of that knowledge to bear along with experiences. And again, getting back to my first point, that's where the trust and credibility starts to go yeah. right up, right? Yeah. Yeah. If you can bring if you can bring something to a partner who doesn't already have it um, and, and and present it in a way that doesn't feel like you're mandating it, right? That that doesn't yeah. feel like you're saying you must do it this way. Right. It's a huge trust builder, right? That's a huge way to get them to feel like, oh, maybe you are on the same side as me. Yeah, I, I agree. And that's one of the things we were asked more than anything is tell me what, what is working with other partners' businesses or what's working with you as a vendor that we can then kind of partnerize, right? So bringing yeah. those examples um, to partners for them to, to kind of figure out what journey works for them it is what's really worked well. I think also putting yourself in the partner's shoes when you approach a coaching session or a deal review. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then and then just layering in, not only how can you help as a channel manager with the goal of enabling for scalability, right? Because you certainly yeah. don't want to get stuck in the point where you're, you're their sales rep <laughs> and that can yeah, happen quickly, right. right? And you have right. many great you know, educational sessions on how to not let that happen. Um, yeah. But I think there's a, a fine line there on some some different levers that you can pull to build the yeah. credibility, maybe lead by example. And then hopefully they're taking that and then you can get the scale. Yeah, that it raises, it raises a good uh, point and a good question. Um, 
I'd be curious. I have my own thoughts from a, you know, from a training perspective on this, but in, in, in real life, how, how do you, how do you help your channel managers, your partner managers sort of deal with the accountability issue, right? Cause yeah. doing a good deal review is great, but coming out of that, if, if you have a set of, Hey, here's what you're going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. And the partner side doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. how, how do you, how do you start to drive some accountability in that again with a group that doesn't actually work for you? Right. So that is also difficult. And I, I think where we find success with partners that are feeling that accountability is again, when they value the channel yeah. manager partnering with them, like they want to work for that channel manager and help them be successful. And if you don't have, again, that trust and credibility, right. they won't care, <laughs> right? They, they yeah. won't care. Um, and again, I've seen that where it works really well with the approach with the channel manager. And then times when, you know, they completely blow a forecast and continuously, and then there's no learnings that come out of that or progress that comes out of that. And then as a, as a leader, I, I may look at that and just say, man, I mean, digging under the covers, maybe, maybe we just don't have the right, the right team together. Yeah. And can you yeah. challenge yourself to maybe look at other individuals that may be able to better match up? Because at the end of the day, we're all people, right? We right. all have our right. own yeah. good and bad, <laughs> right? And without yeah. the way that we look at the world. And so yeah. um, that might be something that you might might want to, you know, consider if you see yeah. trends. Well, and so much of that, I think, is it's so true, regardless of the scenario, that you know, I, I keep because of your background, I keep wanting to do these comparisons between a channel environment and a direct environment. I mean, those of us that have been sales managers in a direct environment, um, it doesn't take very long until you realize that even though that sales rep works for you, you don't have anywhere near as much control over them as you think you do. <laughs> you know, it's not really that different than working with a channel partner in that you still need to build trust and credibility with the sales reps that work with you, just like you do with partners, that you need to take it slow and get them to a point where they see value in what you're bringing to the table. Um, and so, I mean, it's a skill set that applies on both sides, right? We need yeah. to take a step back and realize, put ourselves in the shoes of the other person, in this case, the partner salespeople, and understand where they're coming from. Yeah. Another thing that might help on the accountability front I think it's equally important to make sure as you look at all the key stakeholders within a partner to make sure that you have that relationship, obviously, not only with the sales reps, but that that next level of management, yeah. because there may be some teamings you can do there where you can build in that accountability. If you have their right. that management's ear, right, yeah. where they may be able to apply some pressure, right, or learnings. Yeah to help right. you kind of get to that North star. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that plays into, you know, as a third party consultant, I, I get invited into conversations all the time where I can provide uh, management and senior executives insights into their own organization that they can't get anywhere else. And a channel manager very often plays that role for their partners to be able to go mm -hmm. to the leadership, whether it's a sales manager or the CEO and be able to say, Hey, Here's here's what I'm seeing. Now, of course, I'm only seeing, you know, this much. I have kind of a mm -hmm. narrow view, but here's what I'm seeing. And and you know, yeah. hopefully that's helpful to you as a leader to then do something about it. Yeah, absolutely. Some other tactics that we've used um on the accountability side, you know, is I love I love putting together, you know, some competitive um stack ranks and that that type of yeah. thing as well, because I think yeah. at the you know at the end of the day, people that choose to be in sales typically might have a competitive spirit, and yeah. and I've heard you know from partners remarks like, "Hey, it's so good to be at the top of the stack ring." So I just think there's a combination of different things that you can provide at yeah. different levels of the organization to kind of contribute to what you're trying to accomplish. Right. 
Uh, Selena, I, I could talk with you all day about this. I, I love I love hearing your perspective. You've got such real, you know, in real life experience. Um, and, however, we try and keep these to around 15 minutes. So we're just about there. Um, so let me give you one last thing. I want to, I want you to be able to close this, this episode. Um, what's your advice? So, so we have a fair number of people in the community who are super experienced. And then we have people in yeah. the community that are listening who are kind of relatively new, or maybe they've primarily worked with large ISVs and they've never worked with a resale partner or whatever. Yeah. So what's your advice to someone who doesn't have as much experience in this being a virtual sales manager as part of their channel management job, what's your kind of, you know, one or two things that you would say, top of the list, make sure you get good at this? Yeah, I, I think if you're new to this position or experience, you know, I think it's really just important to continue to challenge yourself on, are you building credibility, building trust with your partner. And some of the small things that contribute to that is timely responses, being transparent, yep. offering to help, right? Yep. Connecting them with other networks, being yep. that advocate, being their biggest advocate and being passionate about their business, their joint success is, is really number one. And I think number two is, is measuring success. So what is working? What isn't working? What should we abandon? What should we double yeah. down on? And then lastly is just celebrate success, right? This is yeah. not an easy job, right. you know, right. bookings and revenue, they, they are lagging indicators, right? So, and that is after a ton of work <laughs> that is done up front. Right. So I right. just would, you know, get really excited about your joint success. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Selena, for coming on, on the podcast with us. I, I'm so grateful for you being here and for you sharing your wisdom with everybody. I hope we can have you back on another episode in the future, if you're willing. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And we can have you another chat. Thanks yeah. again, Selena. Thanks, John. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us today. Remember, the real world tests theories and creates leaders. Don't stop here. Subscribe, learn, and grow with us to make every experience count until our next real life story.